legislature. And I was at the Capitol today uh, with Representative Ryan on some other uh, uh, tax commission uh, problems that we're having. And I had lunch with Representative Mike Reynolds, and he came to my office and, and threw something down on my desk, and he was just beside himself. He found another $63 million that we gave to a company, and the company slipped my mind just now. Uh, we gave it to them three years ago, and as of last week, they closed the, the doors. And so, another $63 million of your money. And, and folks, and, and I looked at Mike and I read it, and I said, that's just one deal. Those deals are done behind closed doors, behind the view of me, behind the view of John a lot of times. But, uh, and oftentimes, it, it's too late. So, uh, we are trying to stick a... Uh, take a poke at it and 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 stop and it, it I mean it's it's a uh, it's got a lot of mo momentum right now and, and you have the big boys that are trying to uh, uh, to capitalize on our goodwill <laughs> you know and I'm concerned that when the Republicans take control this year of the Senate for the first time since 1907 that that may proliferate and so I encourage each one of you looking at a room this big, uh, there are, you represent a, a lot of different representatives and state senators, and I would encourage you to make sure your elected officials that, that work for you do not support those things next year. Well, I can tell you if I do get in there, it won't, uh, I'll be right there beside you. Right there. So. Um, I, I don't personally believe the government should be involved in economic development either. Um, I, I know the Constitution gives the federal government the power to regulate commerce and commerce, interstate commerce, and with foreign nations and with Indian tribes. And though the Tenth Amendment, does, because it's not prohibited by the Constitution and it's not a delegated duty of Congress to regulate interstate commerce, states can do that. But like Randy said, our Constitution specifically prohibits that. So it's, um, it, it's definitely something I oppose, and uh, I don't think that it's constitutional to do so on the federal level. And uh, certainly being in Oklahoma, hope, soon to be hopefully uh, state senator, uh, I don't think it should be something Oklahoma should be doing. And uh, I think um, that in a free society, an economic system in which individuals rather than the government uh, should make the majority of decisions regarding uh, economic activities and transactions and the supply and demand with, within the market should determine who gets what and what is produced rather than government. Okay, well my short answer is no. Um, I would like to give you this, uh, this picture here if you can follow me. Um, regarding a, a football game or a game of any kind, but I'll talk about football. There are a set of uh, officials who don't play the game, who are not on the field, who sit in the room, who see for the game, find the field, write the rules, and say how the game should be played. And then they allow, if they do it right, they allow the players to get out on the field and play. They allow the referees to referee. And the game is played, and it's innovative, and it's real, and it's dynamic, and uh, and, and of course the, the fans watching it can see that. What doesn't happen, and this is where economic development, uh, the way we understand it today, inter interjects itself. The guys that wrote the code, that wrote the rules, they look at the game, a particular game, and say, well, gee whiz, this guy's in a tough shape. He's looking at a fourth down and 15. I think we'll just write some new rules and give him five downs this time. Right in the middle of the game. Now that's what they're doing. That's wrong. I'm against that. You do have to have rules. You have to have a playing field. You have to know that the rules aren't going to change in the middle of the game. And you got to know it's all on you. If you win, it's on you. If you lose, it's on you. Nobody's going to come in and bail you out. Now that's my picture of how the, how the government should play. Question six, we'll start out with Senator Brogdon. 
since the Constitution gives only enumerated powers to the federal government, what steps do we need to take to reclaim our state sovereignty over those non-enumerated powers? In other words, what can the government of the state of Oklahoma do to defend itself against the bandits and pirates who have hijacked the national ship of state? Yeah. Jamie, you're hitting all my hot buttons tonight. I think you know that. <laughs> this happens to be a, another piece of legislation that I ran last year that I'm, I'm happy to say I, I was a Senate author of a House bill with Representative Charles Key, and it was reclaiming the Tenth Amendment. If there has been, if there's been one thing that's gone wrong throughout the years, it is the fact that we, the people, again, you, me, and you, we have allowed. Uh, our state legislators and legislatures to be treated like a stepchild. And the federal government just simply does not have the authority to do most of what they're doing around this, this uh, country right now. We offered a bill last year to reclaim the powers of the, of the state's rights. And we, uh, in this resolution, we had some very strong language uh, imposed on the federal government to cease and assist and we are reclaiming all powers given to us in the Tenth Amendment, states' rights. You see, I was sitting here reading, anticipating this question. I think there's only 19 things, 19 things that the federal government can do. Uh, borrow money, regulate commerce, establish uh, uh, naturalization rules, establish punishment, securities, and uh, coin money for the United States, establish post offices. There are 19 things spelled out that the federal government can do. And it says everything else that is not listed right here. If it's not listed right here, everything, whether named or unnamed, enumerated or not, is left to the states to decide. That's us. And we have let that go. And you know, I was not able to get my bill heard on the Senate floor. Uh, it passed the House with over 90 votes. And Mike Morgan, Senator Morgan, would not allow me to have that bill heard on the Senate floor because it was too controversial. <laughs> now, now, if there is any group of people in the entire world or in this entire country that should support the Tenth Amendment, it should be the state legislators. Yes. You see, it, it's not responsibility. But does anyone have a, a, a guess why we choose to let those go? Any guesses? Money. 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 That's it. Because we would rather give up some of our rights, some of our responsibilities, and exchange that for a little extra uh, tapping of the till at the federal level. So what do we do? We elect people that will serve the people based on the Constitution of the United States. It is the most simple thing that we could do. Elect people that will serve properly. Plain and simple. It's easy to be bold, but guys like Randy besides you, that's for sure. Um, I think there's three things we should do, and that's one, like Randy said, we can pass any law and resolution that is not prohibited, nor already delegated to Congress, that will reaffirm our state sovereignty over uh, areas of intrastate commerce we feel has been unconstitutionally regulated or taxed, liberties that have been unconstitutionally encroached upon, and or property that's been unconstitutionally taken by the federal government. We need to elect and or re-elect representatives and senators for public offices that pass the only litmus test, litmus test allowed by the, uh, the Constitution, which is their adherence to their oath or affirmation to uphold it. And three, we need to tell the federal government that if they don't like it, the founders of this great nation and several Supreme Court justices in their declarations and rulings said, tough. Yeah. <laughs> well, obviously, it's the Tenth Amendment. We need to understand it as a people. Um, I would like to encourage you to catch on to the wave here that's going across the nation. Oklahoma is seen as the leader of reasserting states' rights. Uh, they reasserted their states' rights in uh, 1804. 
You turn down the NAFTA superhighway twice, and 